Um, my name is Rosalind Bill. I am a reader in molecular biosciences at Aston University and I'm also the director of the Aston Research Centre for Healthy Ageing. Um, when I wrote um, a contribution in the New Optimist book, I wrote about my optimism of using yeast to make drug discovery more effective and I think I'm still optimistic about that. That's still going on in the lab. What I didn't write about was um, some of the stuff we do around ageing and that's probably new for this particular interview, so there are, there's lots going on at Aston that I'm pretty optimistic about. Well, what's nice about Archer is that we are a cross-university centre, so we incorporate research from all of our four schools of study, so the four schools of study are life and health sciences, so looking at some of the health and psychology elements of age, the ageing process and the molecular elements of it, engineering and applied sciences, so technology uh, and the use of technology to intervene in age-related changes. Then we've got a School of Languages and Social Studies, so that in, brings in some of the social policy and sociology of ageing. And we've also got a business school. Of course, you know, older adults go shopping and they buy things and they have uh, contact with uh, the wider world, so there's an element to that too. And this all comes together under the umbrella of art. So um, the, the centre is built around five research clusters, which is uh, all to do with the expertise here already at Aston and that's the ageing metabolism, ageing and healing, the ageing eye, ageing mind and ageing lives and essentially within each of those clusters we're looking at understanding age-related change, technological and scientific interventions to deal with the changes and also the social and psychological impact of those changes. So we're looking at how eyesight declines with age and how we can do something about that and how we can perhaps um, intervene and give better services to older adults. In the MIND cluster we're looking at both the biology of the brain and also the psychology of ageing. Uh, within ageing metabolism we're just looking at things like diabetes and other diseases of metabolism which occur typically as we age. Um, ageing and healing is all about how our body's ability to repair and regenerate itself changes as we age and we look also at not only at things like hip replacements and novel materials for that but also hospital acquired infections and how we can do something about that. And then ageing lives encompasses the way that ageing impacts us as we age in our society, so how we feel about it and how we, we should be thinking about provision of, say, adult social care or services for older adults. Well, what we tried to do was showcase this five-cluster structure that we have within ARCH and really to um, highlight the multidisciplinary nature, you know, that we're looking at research from fields as varied as pharmacy and optometry and chemistry and engineering, but also psychology and sociology and economics. And we, we tried to demonstrate that by having a series of short talks that explained both the structure of our clusters, but also highlighted one particularly good example of some of the research we do here. And that was really well received. We had an audience that was composed of lay um, members, older adults themselves, academics, community leaders, people who think about and are involved in um, issues to do with getting older. So it seemed to go really well. We've had lots of positive feedback. People want to get involved, both as volunteers for our studies, to be involved in the design of studies, and they also seem to want to hear more about what we're doing. So I think it was a good opportunity to say we've got a, a very special centre here that looks at ageing really across a range of different disciplines but with a focus on expertise that's here at us, and so I hope we put our, ourselves on the map. Well, I suppose if I think about some of the um, colleagues that spoke and were, were looking at volunteers, looking for volunteers within particular areas, that might be a good, a good way of answering that question. So we've got some sociologists who, who are looking at uh, social policy with regard to how we deal with adult social care. That's a, obviously something that everybody's worried about at the moment. And in Birmingham, there was a, certainly a big discussion around um, some of the decisions made within Birmingham about how we should deal with adult social care. So Archer's really been at the centre of that, so that's interesting and exciting. And then we have lots of different types of research, like the, obviously Birmingham is a, a very um, interesting place to do research because of the range of different ethnicities of the population. So we're looking at how different ethnic groups age and how their metabolisms change and how they might be more or less susceptible to certain types of diseases such as diabetes. So we've got a study there uh, where we're looking for volunteers who might be interested. Um, and we also look at things like how older adults drive and how their ability to um, deal with uh, 
what might happen after they've had an accident or something like that, or how they might feel about driving changes as they age. So we're also looking for volunteers there. So that gives you an idea of some of the range of different studies we're doing. But there's a lot going on. You, you know, please look at the website. There, there's always something new going on here. It's it's quite an exciting, uh, quite an exciting centre. Um, well, I suppose I'm old enough to have been around when email arrived, um, and I suppose that's pretty much shaped the way that. I do work now, M much of what I do is, is through emails, but I think what I've started to realise is, is that there's a lot of opportunity to use social media uh, to spread the word about what we do, so I'm hoping to uh, get a bit more involved in that side of things as well. I've used um, the internet to, to set up research web pages and things like that, but I think that, you know, that hopefully some of these new technologies like Twitter and um, other types of things like that, they might provide an opportunity to, to perhaps spread the word a bit more.